Hello guys, in this video we'll cover the basic concepts of cross-platform development using Rust. In the introductory video of cross-platform development using Rust on my YouTube channel, I asked you guys we should go concept by concept and build projects or we should go project based approach where we learn the concept while building the projects. And most of you guys commented to go concept by concept and once we learn all the concept we can use those concept and build projects. So that's the exact approach I'm following on this channel. So in this video, we'll cover all the basic concepts, CLI, RSX, and then we'll cover components, how to add components, how to pass the props, how to add event handlers and hooks and user input. So we'll cover all of these concepts. So make sure you hang tight and watch till the end and understand all these concepts. And before we dive into the advanced concept of cross-platform development using Rust. So let's begin. First of all, make sure you are in a nice and clean project. Open your terminal. Now, if you don't have Dioxys CLI installed, so you can just run this command cargo install Dioxys CLI. For me, it's already installed. So it will be ignored for you guys. You can just run this command to install and then just do dx help to see all the uh, possible commands that we can run. So to add a new project, we'll just do dx new. And we'll use the web uh, template project name as basic and we'll just use vanilla CSS for now and router we will cover router in the next video where we'll discuss the advanced concepts of cross-platform development using Rust. so we'll set it to false and as you can see a new directory is added to our uh, project explorer and let's begin so even before we start, let's talk about Dioxys. Now Dioxys is a declarative framework. This means instead of telling Dioxys what to do, we simply declare what we want our UI to look like using RSX. And RSX is very similar to HTML in that it describes elements with attributes and children. So let's see RSX in practice. So we can just say app and it returns an element state of this we'll just use prelude star and rsx now in between this rsx whatever we code will be rendered on our ui and we can literally do everything that we do using html CSS, and stuff it is basically the same thing so let's say we add a p tag and here we can just say hello world we are learning and then we can just do launch app and we open our terminal and go to basic of our uh, project folder and then we can just do dx serve now instead of going uh, again and again to the browser i'm just using this embedded browser and as you can see it shows hello world we are learning which is literally what we just added and similarly if we change it to let's say ol and li so let's say apple li actually let's keep it open and banana so as you can see it also is using hot reloading and as soon as i save it it's rendered immediately on the screen similarly we can uh, use div as well so let's say div and hidden as false and we can do hello engineers and after hot reloading it will immediately show hello engineers Similarly, if we set it into true, it will hot reload and show us uh, gone. Similarly, we can do styling. So let's cover styling as well. So we'll just do style and width as 20px, height as 20px, and background color as let's say yellow and let's see our basic style there you go 
as you can see hot reloading immediately shows us yellow color 20px 20px and let's say if i change the width and height it immediately reflects a bigger box so we can do styling as well uh, that's basic of rsx now let's move to components now just like programming in any other language or in rust while doing backend engineering we would not want to write all the logic at a single place or a single function uh, we want to separate out into functions same same concept here we would not want to write all the ui logic in a single uh, single function or a single component we create multiple components so let's see how can we create components how can we reuse components and uh, by the way we can run the same code in a mobile uh, in uh, mobile and desktop as well in the first video i already showed you guys how to run on uh, desktop we'll cover once throughout this video but uh, since i'm using embedded browser so easier to uh, you know run and uh, visualize in the embedded browser so let's add our first component uh, we'll just do fn and let's say the name of the component is, is notes and it returns element and we'll just add a macro component on top and same rsx and let's say it just uh, prints this is notes component and we can use it right here and what we need to do is just to uh, inside rsx just to notes and as you can see it refers to this notes component and then we reload our ui and there you go as you can see it says uh, shows the yellow color box and below it shows this is notes component similarly we can reuse it multiple uh, places multiple times and that's what one of the benefits of components is you can reuse it always as you can see this is notes this is note and once it prints on the top as well so this is how easy it is to add components and uh, dioxys you can simply uh, use this format to add a component that returns element and whatever is in rsx will be displayed so this is how we add a basic component now let's try to add props which is basically our uh, next concept that we are learning props so before we talk about props let me change it to a dull color so it doesn't affect the eyes while uh, continuously watching for you guys okay so why we need props so just like we have arguments we pass to our functions as an input uh, so we have you know different input processed by our functions similarly we have props for our components now as you guys can see right now we have no props for our notes component and every time we just uh, call it or we just use it it basically displays the same text again and again now instead of text if we had some ui or some other stuff it would always display the same because the input doesn't change the input is same so whatever it displays should remain the same now let's add our props so we have to first add a struct let's name it custom props and we have to derive and we have to add a few uh, macros here which is first of all props which is required clonable is required so we have to add clone and partial eq now uh, prop and clone you guys understand it's required we need it and partial eq is uh, needed for uh, making the memoization so basically if the props the value of the props doesn't change the component will not be re-rendered so we'll just add text string and here we'll use our custom props and let's use the p tag and we will just do is props dot text now let's pass our uh, text so text as uh, hello world and let's pass it here as well text as uh, abc text as unknown and text as how are you and as you can see our props are rendered now our component is rendered and our props are basically passed successfully and 
as you can see nodes has a different value each time it's rendered because we are passing a different value but this is how we can pass props and we can add more props as well let's say size i32 but what if we don't pass the size and so it's forcing reload forever and we are not passing the prop yet so what we can do is as you can see it's just forcing reload so what we can do is instead make this uh, prop from required to optional and that is just props and we can say optional so this prop is optional now and even if we don't pass it it doesn't matter as you can see the ui is still rendered even if we don't pass this uh, prop so this is how we can add optional pro uh, props required props and add custom props and use it so this is uh, the props is done now we'll move to event handlers so let's talk about event handlers and while doing so we'll also set up logging as well first of all let's understand why do we need event handlers so when user performs certain action we have to respond and for that we need event handlers to capture the event and then respond to the events for example user click a button we raise an event now we have to handle that event and respond similarly user scroll a page or you can think of any such action so let's first set up the logging and then whenever user click the button we'll log so it's pretty simple we'll just use dioxys logger and in it while in it we have to define the max level of logging so the max level is we want to use info warn and errors so we'll set it to info and expect uh, we'll just say failed to init and here let's say we add a button with on click and here we'll handle the on click event so we'll use the closure and name as let's say click me and here we'll just use info to log whatever is the event data so whenever we click this button it will basically go ahead and log whatever uh, we have on our uh, basically event so here as you guys can see we have our button but we cannot inspect this embedded browser so let's go to some actual uh, web browser where we'll click the button and inspect to see our info log so here we are in our uh, actual browser and uh, as you guys can see some info logs have been generated from our application itself now we click the button and as you can see it prints all the event with the data and coordinates and whatever uh, we have but as you can see we have all the information so we keep on clicking and we keep on getting the event again and again so as you can see that's how you can handle the events and uh, use the event handlers this is super useful concept which we'll be using in a lot of project videos because we'll be adding buttons uh, there so back to our id and now let's talk about the next concept which is hooks uh, we already discussed all of the above now let's talk about hooks now let's talk about hooks so hooks allow us to create state in our components it is often useful to have stateful functionality to build user interaction for example uh, we might want to track uh, whether the user has opened a drop down uh, to show a different ui or user click a button then we want to increase or decrease the count or on a click of button we want to display a pop-up or some uh, different ui then hooks help us to achieve that uh, goal and there are tons of built-in hooks in dioxys just like react uh, but we can build our custom hooks as well which we'll learn in a different video but for now uh, we will try to use what we have already now in this component let's instead of logging that the button is clicked we display some different ui so we remove this and we have our button then we'll add a use signal which help us uh, change our return the state 
so we'll say let mutable count is equals to use signal and we'll initialize it to zero and then here we will just add a p tag so inside the p tag we can just do a uh, click and here we can just display the count so this is our basic use of uh, click now account and now here we will change every time the button is click we'll just add one now as you can see it shows initially clicked as zero and let it complete auto reload and now we click as you can see on each click the count keeps on increasing so as you can see we have an initial state here as zero and then on each click we are basically changing the value and that all is possible using use signal hook so this is just basic hook uh, use signal just like we have use state in rust we'll be using different hooks as we go along we we at times will build our own hooks as well so this is how you can add hooks in dioxys now lastly let's look at user input now let's talk about user input so oftentimes on our interface we have to ask user for their input be it text box where we want them to type out email password or be it a attachment input like drop us a file or image so we want user to have a way to provide us the input for that we need input a component so let's see how can we use it so we'll just remove this button stuff and here also we'll be using some state so let's say we want email input and we'll say use use signal and initially we'll assign it to let's say string from and uh, empty string just and then we'll just say input and value as whatever is user email and on input again an event handler will move and right here we'll just do is uh, email dot set uh, whatever user types so event dot value so as you can see after hot reload we have our input box and let's say user type is uh, check it semicolon com so as you can see it's returned in our input box so this is how we can get the input from user and we can just set it in the state maybe display somewhere or if we don't want to display then we can just have it as it is but let's say if we want to display let's say in a p tag then we can just do is uh, email now as you can see as soon as i'm typing we are getting p tab updated with whatever the email that we are typing so and as soon as we remove it the p tag is also empty so this is again by using the event handlers and state so this is all the basic concept that you just need to get started with cross-platform development using rust now in a future videos we'll cover more advanced concepts and also we'll learn about creating custom hooks and different other concepts i hope you guys learned a lot in this video if you do just comment down below on what do you think about uh, cross-platform development using rust and i'll catch you guys in the next video with another interesting topic thank you bye bye